So with that all in motion, it is a pleasure to welcome you all to today's finale of the Know Your Worth Challenge. Today's masterclass is called Clear, Compt and Confident. And I am really excited um, to have all of you joining us today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day because we know that your time is precious. Your time is super, super precious and we appreciate um, that you are spending it with us. So thank you. Keep those questions coming and nice to see so many people from all around the world here today. For those of you who I don't know, my name is Maggie. Hello. I am the founder of Pep Talk Her and I'm on a mission to close the gender pay gap because I think it really, really sucks. Um, I, in my former life, I was a journalist and I actually experienced pay inequality myself. It's a long story, but basically I found out quite by accident that the dudes who I sat next to were getting paid quite a lot more than me. And so fast forward, what are we, six, seven years later, um, and now that's my whole mission is to make sure that that doesn't happen to you. So I've made all of the mistakes um, and I've made some successes as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk you through those things today. And the good news is that through the work at Pep Talk Her, we have supported people to get millions of dollars in cumulative pay raises. So we are super proud of that and excited to help support you to earn more money too. So let's start things off. Type into the chat for me one word that describes how you're feeling about your career right now. Cause it is a funny time, isn't it? There's a lot going on for a lot of people. We know that inflation is rampant. We know that we're in the midst of the great resignation. And in a lot of ways, there's never been a better time, honestly, to be negotiating and to be looking for a job. So I would love to hear from you what your sentiment is right now. So Liz is excited. So that's cool. We like to hear that. Um, yeah. OK, cool. So a lot of people feeling stuck, super normal. I hear that a lot. Stagnant. Yeah, that's interesting. I like this, though. Elsie's hopeful. Really cool. OK, cautiously optimistic. We will allow the two words. Don't worry. <laughs> um, ambitious. Yes, Seema. OK, yes, I love that. Ambitious. What are you ambitious for? Let me know as well, because I want to help you. I want to help support you to make sure that we can get you there. Um, so for today's session, um, we're going to spend about 30 to 45 minutes together and I'm going to keep some time for questions for you as well. And really what we're going to focus on today is um, clarifying what you're worth, right? And how you go about asking for that confidently, even if you kind of don't feel super comfortable with that process of negotiating. And even if your confidence isn't 11 out of 10 right now, or if you feel like you're not allowed to negotiate. And I've had some messages from some of you prior to today's session who do you do feel like you're a bit stuck. You might be in the public service or in a company where there's quite specific levels and bands that you need to work within. So we're going to touch on those things as well. It, it is going to help support you, even if that applies to you today. Right. So a little bit of tough love that I want to I want to kick things off with. You know, you're probably leaving money on the table right now. Right. So just take a moment to think about that. All of us right, are probably leaving money to some extent on the table. Um, and keeping that in mind, you know, given that we're all behaving within the confines of how we were raised and how we've behaved in the past, it takes a lot of work, right, to break those old habits and the ways that we've been used to behaving throughout our career and indeed throughout our life. And for a lot of that, for a lot of us, a part of that is unpacking the fear and that kind of icky feeling that some of us have when it comes to asking for more, right? And then the other thing, and I can see there's a couple of people who've been through our career level up program on the call. Welcome to you. Hey, Megan. Nice to see you. Hey, Sarah. Um, the other thing that I will say, and they'll tell you this as well, right, that when you choose to invest in yourself, invest in your career and invest in your salary success, it takes time and effort. So there's not a quick fix. I wish I could send you a pill in the mail that would just fix it overnight, you know, perfectly. Unfortunately, that doesn't that doesn't exist. Right. So it does take time and effort to prepare um, and to get yourself in the best possible position so that you can get the results that you really want. Right. So there isn't a quick fix. There's a fix and we talk you through that in a lot more detail during the eight week career level up program. And I'm hoping that a lot of you feel like you're part of the way there already because of the five day challenge, right? And those muscles that you've started to stretch already. Um, so we're, we're gonna get together and put those building blocks one by one by one on top of each other so that we can really build up that muscle for you so that it becomes second nature, right? And this is just something that you do in your career. Great question. Well, more of a comment really from Caitlin in the chat. 
progress over perfection. Yeah. And it is about a growth mindset. I love that you've raised that there, Kat, uh, Caitlin. Um, that's a big part of what we talk about actually in the career level up program as well. Uh, awesome. And I'm loving hearing from Seema ambitious to take on roles that make you feel like an imposter, but that you want to take a chance on yourself. Yes. And in fact, we spend an entire module in the career level up program, specifically talking about imposter syndrome. So we unpack that in quite a lot of detail too. Um, oh, okay. Awesome. We've already had some success. Well done, Aileen. It's been a pleasure having you in the challenge. I love that you're already reaping the rewards. That's really cool. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm not going to sugarcoat things to you. And that's why I say like, if there's, if there's tough love that you need to hear about leaving money on the table, I'm always going to be giving that to you. Right. Because I want to be the person who's really honest with you, um, in the scenarios like now where this is a really safe space to have these conversations so that when you walk into a room with a recruiter or a future boss, you're really prepared, um, with the real world, real world scenario of how things are likely to go. Right. So we do run an eight week live group coaching program, which is our flagship course at Pet Talk Her. It's called the Career Level Up. As I said, we've got some graduates who are joining today's session, too. So welcome to them. Um, it's an awesome program. So I'll talk you through that in a little bit more detail and stick around to the end because I've got some discounts, bonuses and prizes that we're going to give away for the finale, too. OK, so one thing that I do want to sort of say to you is that you don't have to go through this process alone right? You don't have to do your career alone and you don't have to prepare for these challenging conversations and shifting your mindset on your own. And in fact, when we try to do it on our own, for sure, we can make progress. And there's lots of things you can do. You can Google, you can watch YouTube, and I highly recommend all of those things. And they're going to get you somewhere, right? But whether they're going to get you the extreme amount of progress that you want and that you need, and frankly, that you deserve in your career, that's another story, right? And whether they can do give you the education that you need without doing any damage is also another story. So I'm going to talk you through some of the consequences that can happen when you put a foot wrong going through this process in your career too. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you too. This is a win that we've had. Um, we get lots of wins every week coming through in our private Slack channel from graduates and people going through the program. But I wanted to share these with you in particular, especially the one about the pay raise um, that Binakshi got, which was 14% in terms of base salary plus the 14% bonus. Um, and when you compare that to the fact that people in her company were getting a max of 5%, you can see the difference that it makes, right? When you go through this process and you prepare to that next level. It really does make a huge difference and we'll go through and quantify that in a second. Okay, so here's why being clear, confident and comped in your career matters, right? And we talked about this a little bit in the challenge, but you know, money matters. That's the reality, whether we like it or not, it's very important in this day and age. And if we want to live the life that we want to lead, if we want to support our children, if we want to support charities, if we want to have a great time, right? And every pay raise that you can negotiate and get is going to get you one step closer to your financially secure life. So I want you to keep that in mind when you're thinking about why am I bothering? Why am I putting the time and effort into this? This is why, right? And you did some of these calculations during the challenge, right? But if we take, for example, a one-time salary increase of $5,000, and if we compound that over the course of 40 years, so if you're 20, and we sort of extrapolate that out to when you're 60 or if you're my age, I'm 37. So if we extrapolate out that out to me retiring at 77, when we compound that $5,000 raise, we're talking about $1.4 million, right? That's how much money a small $5,000 raise can add up to. So it doesn't seem like a lot necessarily, but it really is in the long run. And I want you to keep that in mind when we're talking about salary raises today. And the other thing is when we think about that $1.4 million figure or even, you know, the $5,000 figure this year, let's just close our eyes for just a second and take a think about what would that mean? Like if you got a $5,000 raise this year, what would you do with it? What would that mean for you and your family? If you could project into the future, your retirement with that extra 1.4 million, what would you do? Like I'd only ever be flying business. <laughs> That's what I'd be doing. That's what kind of gets me excited. But I want you to, I do want you to start to think about what would you do, right? And what impact would that extra salary mean for you? Because if you can get your mind excited about it, 
it can help you overcome some of the anxiety and the fears that we have that sometimes hold us back, right, from having these conversations or wanting to have the conversations. Um, oh, cool. Sarah's had a job offer. Congratulations. Keep the comments coming. And let me know. Do let me know. What's your one thing? As I said, for me, I'm quite excited about the idea of flying business class. I think that that would be really cool if that was just the default. Maybe you'd love to be able to like host your mates for a really fancy dinner. Maybe you'd want to take your kids to Disneyland or you know, they maybe they're obsessed with Frozen or something. So you want to take them to Disneyland. Maybe you'd build a new house or buy a beach house or something like that. Dream about what the possibilities could be because small raises incrementally add up to be huge, hugely significant throughout the course of your career. So I do want you to get excited about that and to start to spend some time and some brain space thinking about it. Okay, so let's dive into some of the specifics. You're here because you want to learn. You might be skeptical about, you know, just how much you can negotiate for your raise or what's possible in your career. You might have tried and failed in the past um, and you might be dubious because maybe you get told a lot, oh, there's no more budget or not this year, maybe next year. Why should you even bother asking? Um, Maybe some of these things come up for you, like you're too nervous. No one at my work ever negotiates their raise. I'm not even that special. Why would I? Um, when should I ask? Like, I don't really know the right, the right time. And will asking damage my reputation? I hear this so often. Um, I've had so many women. I reckon 30% of women that I work with often say to me, Meggie, I would rather earn less money than have that conversation. It makes me feel so uncomfortable, the thought of having that conversation and the fear of what my boss will think. I'd actually prefer not to even have the conversation. And let me know with a yes or a no in the chat if that's you as well, um, because it's really, really common. I'm always a little bit surprised, but actually when we think about it, um, it's, it's, it's actually not that surprising, right? Because of the way that we're socialized from a very young age as well. Um, so one of the things, again, thinking about the tough love that we talk about in the program, um, I'm going to give this to you straight, right? When you are feeling like you don't want to ask the question, or if you're fearing what's going to happen when you do ask the question of a higher salary or negotiating your freelance rates, because I know we've got a lot of freelancers here today, I'm going to ask you to get over yourself, right? Like, again... I don't mean to be rude about it, but I need you to get over that, right? I need you to get over that fear um, and whatever is holding you back from asking because you cannot afford not to ask. I had a student, um, a couple, maybe, I don't know, like almost a year ago now, and she said, oh, I couldn't possibly ask for a raise. I tried that and it didn't work. And I said to her, well, okay, how did it go? How did the conversation go? She said, no, no, they, I asked for a raise and they said they couldn't do it. I said, oh, okay, that sucks. Sorry to hear that. When did you ask? And she said, six years ago. She'd asked for a raise six years ago and she'd never asked since, right? So I don't want you to be that person because as you know, if you go six years without a pay raise because of inflation and the cost of living, you are essentially sliding backwards. So I do not want that to happen to you, right? Because we know what happens when you get a raise and the compounding effect of that Equally, if you don't ask, you're essentially sliding backwards to a similar degree, right? And I don't want that to happen to you. Um, but, you know, I've, I've been there, right? And I, I didn't negotiate my very first salary, which was a mistake, a mistake that's probably going to cost me about half a million dollars over the course of my career. Um, but I realize that now, and that's not going to happen to any of you because I'm going to teach you that you're not going to do that. Right. And I didn't ask for a raise back when I was a foreign correspondent and a journalist. Um, I was too scared. I thought that they would judge me. I thought that they wouldn't give me very good stories if I was like high maintenance and dared to kind of ask for a pay increase. Um, and then when I did dare to raise the fact that the men in the newsroom were earning more than me, it certainly did not go down well. It was not an easy conversation uh, and it was honestly extremely messy, um, which we can talk about on another day. Uh, but it was a really hard process to realize that even though I was raised by a feminist, even though I'm fairly confident, I still experienced the gender pay gap. Like I'm living proof of that. Like I was literally earning less because of my gender, right? That's the only reason I fell into that trap and I was, I was one of those statistics. And I don't want that to happen to you. 
Um, it's not fair that this happens. It's not equitable. And I hope that we live in a world one day where this stops happening. But the reality is that we know that women are earning 15 to 20% less than men right now, right? Statistically in the developed world. So if we understand the situation that we're in, even though we hate it, we can do what we can at a grassroots level for your scenario to change your particular outcome. And that's what we're going to talk about um, a little bit, a little bit more. And yeah, my instinct was like, I didn't want to like speak up. I really wanted to be nice. I wanted the bosses to like me. I wanted to kind of like keep things even keel and be friends. And so I didn't say anything because I thought that if I did, they wouldn't like me. You know, I, I kept thinking I'm so lucky to have this job. Like it's so hard to get a reporting job in television. I'm so lucky, you know, they could, they could replace me at any point in time. Um, if you've ever felt lucky in your job, like I did, let me know in the chat, just put the word lucky and let me know if that resonates with you. You know, a lot of us have this sense that we should be grateful. We should be super grateful to have this job and to have this opportunity. So sometimes that can hold us back from asking the question, right? Cause we feel like it's a little bit awkward if we do. Yeah. And there's a lot of people saying in the chat, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, but they also feel lucky, you know, and you can be really lucky and you can be really grateful and you can love your work and still have a conversation about salary and expectations that are reasonable given your experience and your impact in the business. So you can do both, right? So I just want to acknowledge that, that I've, I've totally lived through this myself. I've made all of these mistakes too. Um, this used to be Whitney. Oh, that's cool. Um, interesting. They were lucky to have me. Yes. Yeah, so let's flip the switch today, right? Basically exactly what Whitney said. Um, let's flip the script, right? I don't want you to be the one who feels like you're lucky to kind of have that job and opportunity. We want to actually change the narrative so that they appreciate that they're lucky to have you as well, right? And that it can actually go both ways. I really appreciate you sharing that, Whitney. Thank you. Um, and, you know, one of the things that on reflection, thinking about all of those multiple mistakes that I unfortunately made, um, I should have been tracking my successes, right, as I went along so that it was more obvious and easier for me to communicate why they were lucky to have me. I should have believed, like deeply believed, I thought I was confident, but clearly I didn't have that deep inner um, sense of self-worth and value in myself. Because if I did, I would have asked the question, right? And I would have gotten over that, that deep sense of feeling lucky and grateful and not wanting to rock the boat. And I should have moved out of my own way. You know, and I hear this, I had, a, I had a WhatsApp message this week from a friend of mine. She won't get out of her own way. She keeps complaining it's a bit of a broken record, the same situation, and she won't get out of her own way. And nothing has changed for years and it won't change because you know, she's in a cycle of complaining about the situation she's in in her career. And to be fair, some of the situations that she's in really suck. But at the same time, some of the situations she's in control of and she's choosing not to take action. And that might have been you in the past. And it certainly was me. Um, but I know if you're here, then there's something about you that's at the precipice that kind of wants to create change right, or wants to kind of mix things up. So you're in the right place and I'm happy to have you here and I'm here to support you because it's really hard. And it's also hard like when you don't know what to do to get out of your own way or to get out of a toxic work situation or to get out of a rut in terms of what you think you should expect to earn. It's really hard to kind of jolt ourselves out of that. And so that's why we built Pet Talk Her was to build this community so that you all feel like you're not alone. Right. And so that there are other people here to help support you, cheer you on, you know, help you with ideas of different research, different websites, different secret salary um, sites that we've got that I can share with you as well that will give you real time data that you can use to advocate and negotiate for your work. So that's the whole reason we've built this community. And there's about 60,000 of us around the world now. So a huge welcome. I know we've got four or five or maybe six countries um, represented in the chat today. So great to have you all here. Um, so yeah, so I, I've been in the exact same situations, right? Like I was underpaid and undervalued. My first salary, I think it was $28,000. I thought I was living my best life. Um, I managed to triple it in three years. Um, and throughout the course of my career, managed to negotiate really significant pay bumps of 50, 60 grand and sometimes more as I went through my career. So I want to share with you some of the techniques that I used 
um, to get there, right? So here's the three secrets that I would love for you to walk away with from our time together today. And I really hope that this can be applicable to you and your career too. We want to find career clarity. We want to find true confidence, like not just surface level, what I thought was confidence, like deep inner worth confidence, right? That's going to shift your entire career, if not your entire life. And we want you to get a comped plan in place too. Okay, so let's jump into secret number one, getting really clear. So grab out a pen and paper. If you're old school like me, or you can open up a Google Doc. Um, I want you to get really clear. If you were to sum up in one word, what do you think is the one thing that's holding you back right now? It might be fear of being liked. I have this, I have fear of my boss not liking me. It might be a partner who's kind of holding you back and says you couldn't possibly ask for an extra $10,000. It might be the industry that you're in. You might've capped out in your industry, but what do you think is the one thing that's really holding you back? It could be your mindset as well. Maybe you're in more of a fixed mindset and you're looking to move into that growth mindset phase. Because when we dare to take responsibility for where we're at, honestly, truly, and what's really going on, um, that is the way that we can really break the cycle and start forging a new path in our career going forward. So what's the one thing that you think is in your way right now? This is interesting. So someone's put in the comment that they're concerned they're going to seem desperate. So I think that that's really interesting. And I appreciate you acknowledging that because that's helpful for you when you then identify how you set up the conversations that you're having uh, and the plan B's that you want to put in place so that you've got alternatives in your career hunting as well. Oh, this really resonates with me. Thank you for sharing this. Someone said in the chat, um, fear that they're going to outgrow their family and friends. This is, uh, this might be you, you may not even have thought of this, but yeah, sometimes we might have grown up in a family where working hard and being part of the working class and being, you know, poor or struggling or middle class was really part of your family's identity. So when you then go to break out of that, and when you're looking to be aspirational and hit crazy new levels of success that hasn't been seen in your family before, it can be really tough to make that leap, especially if there's no one in your family who can kind of pave the way or show you how they got there. So sometimes that does hold us back. And I really appreciate you acknowledging that because that's hugely powerful for you. And there's some books. I'm happy to send you some interesting books that might be helpful for you. We talk a little bit more about that in the Career Level Up program as well. How do you put in place a support system so that even though your family hasn't been where you want to go, you've got other people going with you and other people who've paved that path ahead of you? Guilt of leaving family, the industry, yes. Uncertainty, failure. What if they say no? What if I ask for a raise and they laugh me out of the office? What then? Yes, very, very common. Thank you. This is super common too. I'm, we're getting more and more women joining the Career Level Up program who are transitioning back to work from parental leave. Um, yeah, and I don't have children myself, but from what I understand from the, the women who've been through the program, it's a really tough transition. So this might this might have happened to you um and yeah i think you know navigating that transition is really really challenging too and again that sense of feeling grateful to have a job when you've got a young baby all those things can come into it as well fear of rejection yes oh my gosh such great things coming through thank you for, for sharing this and i really i really want you to share this I, I, I thank you for sharing it but i want you to i want you to be really honest with yourself even if you don't share it in the chat what is that one thing for you and write it down because there's power in doing that, right? Putting pen to paper and acknowledging it because it's not always easy. We're not always proud of the thing that is holding us back. And it's hard. It can be really hard to unpack that, right? And it takes time. And again, I wish there was a pill I could send you in the mail or write you a prescription, but it takes a long time. But it is possible, right? And once we're clear on what that is, it's easier for us to put in place you know, a roadmap to get over those speed humps of those things that do hold us back. And that's the cool thing about going through the live group program is that you're surrounded by dozens of other people who maybe have the same speed bumps that they have to get over, right? Or maybe they've got different ones that they're willing to share with you as well. And we can learn so much from each other 
um, and the different things that are holding us back. And so it also helps you to be a better manager because you can identify how are your direct reports holding themselves back. What can you see in your bosses or people up the food chain in the workplace? What's maybe holding them back? It all helps when you're, you know, better understanding office politics in a business as well, which is an entire module that we talk about in the program too. Okay, so, you know, one of the things that, the other secret that I really reflect on um, from the mistakes that I made in my career in terms of, you know, really valuing myself and advocating and negotiating for myself is confidence. And it's very easy, easier to have surface level confidence. But again, I want you to just be honest with yourself now. You can share in the chat if you want, but I want you to be really honest. Like, do you really believe that you're worth it? If we think about that number that you would love to have for your next pay raise step, if you think, put that number in the back of your mind just for a moment, do you really believe that you're worth it? Because here's the thing, you know, people pay the price that you put on yourself. Again, like some tough love, it's not fair. It's not right. You might be the hardest worker in your office, but if you don't believe that you're worth more, your boss can see straight through that, you know, and I wish you all had amazing bosses who voluntarily offered you raises and all this kind of stuff. But the reality is you've got to be doing your own PR and you've got to be doing your own negotiating because if you're not doing it, we cannot rely on anyone else to do it for you. And that really starts with truly believing that you're worth it in the first place. Right. And again, no quick fix for this, um, but it's really helpful to understand uh, more about confidence and where it comes from. Because did you know that they've actually done studies and that our confidence, our confidence levels max out when we are nine. And I've got a nephew who's about to turn nine and it's so interesting. I sort of watch him and he's grown in confidence and I'm kind of really worried about the next couple of years when, you know, you start to care what other people think and identify that what you wear matters in the playground and you know all these kind of discrimination things that come up and unconscious biases that we all carry and that we all experience in my life so the highest rate of confidence that we have is when we are nine I don't think we've got any nine-year-olds on the call today um but so for all of us we have work to do on this Right. And confidence isn't everything. And of course, you've got to be super competent, which I know you all are. And that's part of the reason why you're here. But it's really interesting to understand this. Right. So we talk a lot about deep strategies and tactics that you can put in place to, again, rewire your mindset towards how confident you are in yourself and how much you truly believe what you are worth and what you are valued, because that matters right? When it comes down to being clear, comped and confident in your negotiations, because really there are tangible tools that can build you up and we want to get back as close as we can to that nine-year-old self level of confidence. But again, it's not easy. And some of you have been saying in the chat, you know, you might be at a bit of a crossroads with certain friends, relationships, family. If you're being sucked into kind of a toxic cycle or vortex of as if you could ever become a VP, how could you ever expect to become a director? Like you don't, you don't need to earn six figures. That's outrageous. All these kind of things um, that can hold you back, but there's tools that you can put in place that, that will help you overcome that hump as well and get through that roadblock. Um, and then the, the third secret really is having a step-by-step -step roadmap specifically to identifying what your number is, what it should be, and how you can get paid that, right? Because ultimately we want you to be paid fairly, and in fact, more than fairly, because you're so exceptional at your job um, for the role that you're doing. And you can't afford not to do this, right? We've talked about this a little bit in the challenge when we calculated what the dollar increase would be for you if you got a small percentage increase or indeed a larger increase as well. And it's also not just about you. That's the other thing I want you all to keep in mind, like salary and the amount of, of money that you command as a freelancer, as a contractor, as a full-time employee, it's not just about you. I want you to kind of think of this collectively too. This is very helpful for particularly for women. When we negotiate collectively, we are more powerful, right? And studies have actually shown that when women negotiate on behalf of others, they are more successful as collective negotiators. 
Um, and so when I say it's not just about you, I, I don't have children, but again, so for me thinking about, well, who else is this about? I've got two nephews and a niece. I've got a fiance. I've got, you know, parts of um, social impact work that we do at Pep Talk Her that are really important to me. Lobbying causes, political causes that we really want to support. So when I'm going through an experience where I'm struggling from a negotiation perspective, I like to think of it as bigger than just me and what my needs are for my rent and my lifestyle. It's not just about that. It's bigger than that. And it's the same for you too. Right. So we go into that in a lot more detail in the program as well. But I want you to keep that collective mindset um, in the back of your head when you're thinking about how you are negotiating. Carla, this is great. We're negotiating for all of us. We cross the finish line together. Yeah. And I think, you know, Carla's touching on a really interesting point there because that's the other thing. If you accept a job offer and you don't negotiate, you're stuffing up yourself, firstly. Um, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice. But for the next candidate who comes along, it's then harder for them, right? So if we all ask, we set an expectation, and indeed the recruiter expects you to negotiate, which we'll talk about in just a moment, they expect it. So if you don't kind of step up to the plate and ask the question, you're then setting a precedent for future candidates who come along, right? It might be more awkward for them if you don't kind of do your bit in the negotiation process. So I like to think of it in that collective mindset and it's really helpful um, for me as well. Thank you for all your questions. Keep them coming. This is awesome. We love to see it. We love to see it. Um, and, you know, part of that secret when we think about the compensation secrets that you can put into place when you're negotiating, you know, the other part of that secret is that you have power, right? Yes, the company might be big. Yes, they may be in charge of your livelihood financially in terms of you need the paycheck. I get it. Um, however, don't discount the power that you have as well, right? Don't discount the impact that you make, the value that you contribute to the business. Um, and being able to articulate that with specifics is super, super important. And as I said, I can see in the chat, we've got a couple of graduates from the program here today. Um, Megan and Sarah, I know that like, they're probably sick of me saying this because I'm like a broken record, but I know that they've both utilized this in their salary conversations internally too. It is such a stronger proposition when you walk into that meeting saying, I've had three exclusive stories. This is why I deserve a promotion. Or, you know, I've brought in three new clients you know, which has contributed X hundreds of thousands of dollars to the business, or, you know, I managed five very difficult parents in the grade three classroom this year, and we achieved X, Y, Z results for the students. And, and that's why I'd like to be considered for the next, the next highest band as a teacher. Whatever your industry is, you've got to be able to quantify that so that you walk in there into those conversations with more power and with more meat on the bone to have those conversations. It's really quite game changing for you in terms of your confidence and also the compensation that you can expect as a result. Right. Um, and thank you for everyone who's been DMing me. I'm just trying to get through them at the same time. Um, if I negotiate, won't they think that I'm high maintenance or worse a bitch? Right. This is something This is probably, I would say, top two or three questions that I get in the pep talk her instagram dms right if i negotiate won't they think that i'm high maintenance right and let me know in the chat if this is something that you fear right and i want you to know that we did a session recently with um a recruiter who's worked for companies like linkedin and tesla and she said you know we expect candidates to negotiate there are a very small number of companies that have a policy of first and final offer so they actually don't negotiate as a policy. It's a very, very small number of companies. Um, so unless it's one of those companies, there is an expectation that negotiation is part of the process, right? And so we unpack that for you in more detail and give you scripts that you can use specifically to put into play when you are going through this negotiation process, whether you're in an existing job looking to step up and stay within the company, or if you're wanting to transition to a new role, maybe to a freelance opportunity or something like that as well, right? So you get access to all of those scripts in the Career Level Up program too, which I'll talk you through in just a moment. Um, but stick with me as well for everyone who's thinking, but the economy, but are we walking into World War III right now? 
but what is the world even coming to? I can't even keep up. Um, is anyone even getting a raise right now? Right. And in some ways, there's never been a better time to negotiate a salary raise. Um, and then in other ways, it is getting harder and harder, but it's truly not impossible. It's very possible. Um, and we see this literally every day, I would say, in the um, pep talk her career level up Slack. I get messages from students who are getting raises, who've had, you know, one off bonuses, who are getting um, promotion bumps, all that kind of stuff. Right. So it's definitely happening. And I've actually got let me let me show you a really quick video, too. Um, this is super cute. You will love this. I'm going to bring this up and show this to you as well. Uh, OK. Take a listen to Elisa, who went through our program and she has just recently negotiated a raise. I'm still overjoyed that in the middle of a pandemic, when most people lost a job, I got a raise. And I, I really do attribute that to, to Maggie and Dr. So it is possible. I think uh, Alicia did a lot of the work herself, but she used the framework that we gave her in the career level up program. And she was the only person on her team who got a raise. And in fact, there was actually some tightening of staff across, across her, her business. Um, but she got that raise and she got a promotion. The promotion took another couple of months to come through, but she got both in the end, right? It took a couple of months, but both of them came through for her. And she attributes that to the roadmap that we planned out for her. Um, typically we see students in the career level up four to five thousand dollars is not disappointing it's great and we're happy with it but that's at the very lower end of what we would expect typically it's a lot higher than that typically it's sort of anywhere from 12 13 percent upwards of 35 percent in terms of um, the raise that people are getting on their basis which can look differently depending on how much people are earning but you know it does look like 20 30 grand sometimes more we had a hundred and three thousand dollar pay raise which I wish happened every day. It doesn't, uh, but it does happen. And it did happen for one of our students um, just a couple of months ago, right? So there are results like this that are possible. Obviously, we're not making them up. Um, obviously, you have to do work to get these results. And again, it's not like a quick fix where it's like guaranteed. But, you know, the, the, the key thing that I think is so important with all of these things is, again, you can Google how to get a raise. You can Google how to negotiate. You can do all of that. But what Google doesn't give you and what I haven't found on YouTube, and let me know if you have found this, is like anything that takes into account the human factor. And that's really what the difference is. When you look at the secrets to salary success, it's the human factor that makes all of the difference. And that is taking into account your super strengths and your zone of genius, being aware of your boss's ego and what's going on behind the scenes there and taking that into account in terms of how strategically you play that conversation being really aware of the office politics and the environment that's going on right like that's crucial um you've got to take all of that into consideration um because when you are as successful as i know that you all are and as aspirational you're climbing the ladder quite quickly and when you get you know past five or six years of experience in the workplace, it's then very strategic, right? Of course, you should be asking for a raise every year, but the way that you ask really matters. And again, it's not fair, but the way that women ask really, really, really matters because we know that male and female bosses discriminate against women who, who try to negotiate. Um, sucks, it is what it is. Um, so until there's generations of change and that, you know, starts to shift, what we can do is work within the confines of what we know is most likely to happen, right? So the way that you ask does matter. And that's where I kind of just want you to be really careful not to put a foot wrong, right? Because you don't want to actually do more damage by asking the question. And that is possible. And I, ha I, I do see that, right? And I don't, I don't want that to happen to you because that's counterintuitive and that's not the goal that we're working towards, right? That's not going to help propel you forward. Um, so that's not what we want. Um, and one of the things that I will say is, you know, in the Career Level Up program, yes, there's a lot of content and you get access to the portal with all of these videos and that's great. And we do live coaching sessions very similar to this every single week. Plus we do office hours in Slack. But the other thing that's super cool is that you get to actually do practice, right? So you'll be in breakout rooms, meeting with other people, you know, your new career BFFs from the cohort, and you'll be doing these practices. 
so that the first time when you're negotiating or saying your number out loud is not in the actual meeting. I don't want that. I really want you to have had some baby steps practice ahead of time so that you feel very prepared when you're in the real deal scenario, right? Um, so, and yes, for people who are asking, is there a recording? Yes, there's a recording that's going to be available for 48 hours. So I will circulate that to you, Emily. Never fear. We will send that around. So let me let me give you an, um, a little bit of a flavor of some of the um, practice exercises that we go through in the career level up so that you kind of really get to put into practice a lot of the theory and you get to start to stretch that muscle yourself of actually having the negotiation yourself. Really helpful in nailing that, you know. And you even had us record it, Meg, like, you know, we, we could watch it back and, you know, give yourself that kind of fierce feedback that you need to improve. And that's, you know, that's that's what it is. And I think if you're looking for someone to kind of say to you, oh, you're perfect and you're doing everything right and, like, that's amazing and go along about your day and don't change anything, if that's you, then I think, like, if that's what you're looking for, career level up is is probably not for you, right? Like, we are extraordinarily supportive. This is a community that's got your back and we want you to succeed. And that's my vision and my goal in life as well, right? But at the same time, I'm going to give you the um, landmines that can appear along the way because I want you to avoid them. So if I think that there's something that's going to come up for you, I'm going to be really honest in advance and say, hey, I don't want this to muck you up. Let's make sure we prepare this or make sure you do this ahead of time because I don't want you to fall into that trap. Right, because as I said, it can be more damaging. And one of the most important things to realize when we're being really honest with ourselves is when we're going through this process is like, how much do you want this change, right? Are you willing to walk away? Do you want to actually see this change for yourself? Are you ready to kind of take that courageous step? Because it's not easy. This isn't rocket science, so that's the good news. But it's also not easy, right? And there is, you know, the program has a one hour coaching call a week. So I would expect you to make at least an hour a week, um, ideally 90 minutes. So you've got also half an hour to kind of do some more thinking and some work afterwards. But there is a level of expectation of a time commitment from your from your side, right? If you If you can't make classes, that's fine. We record them for you. But I want you to really think like, are you actually willing and looking to make this change right now? Like, is it that important to you at this point in your career? Hopefully it is because money is a very powerful motivator and career success obviously doesn't change overnight. So you need to invest in it earlier than you think you do. Um, but it's important to be really honest with yourself because a pattern that you might've seen in yourself or in friends or in your family, it's, it's probably the most common pattern that I see. Um, and we've sort of touched on this a little earlier and it's fear, you know? the fear of what that change would look like, the fear of if I earned an extra $30,000, would that change who I am as a person? If I applied for a job that was paying me $220,000, what would that do to the perception of me and my friendship group, right? If maybe you work, maybe a lot of your friends are in lower earning jobs than you and you kind of feel like you would feel awkward if you kind of took a jump to that next level. We've had people go through the program who've made jumps into the four to $500,000 earning capacity, you know, so it's, it's a big jump for some of us. And some of you might be going from sort of 80,000 to 100,000. Uh, does that does that bring up anything for you? Right? So I want you to be really honest about that, too. Um, and we will work through that with you. But just being aware that some of those blocks will come up for you, and make you feel a bit uncomfortable when we're talking about the possibilities and how exciting they are. Um, but there is a way to work through them, right? They are deeply ingrained and it just takes time um, and tactics, frankly. And that's that's what we'll be stepping you through, right? But I know that like for a lot of you, we've been in touch on email and in the, the Facebook group during the challenge as well, like impact and influence in your career is important. Getting more recognition and having more responsibility is really exciting for you and the confidence as well to ask for more. Right. So um, I know that that's why you're here. Um, and, you know, I think when you when you look at why would you be investing in joining the career level up program, um, it's my hope for you that it will be super game changing for you and your career. Right. Because you will be very clear on the exact numbers that you need 
for those negotiations and you'll have that inner confidence, that muscle that we will have built up, extending on the Know Your Worth Challenge into the Career Level Up program so that it'll be, you know, you'll basically be Oprah at the end of it. Um, And you'll actually get to the point where you're kind of looking forward to having those salary conversations and change that that change in mindset is pretty significant for a lot of people like the fact that actually it, it's not something that you have to fear and feel super anxious about. Um, so thank you so much for sending off through all these questions. Yes, yes, yes. Keep them coming through. We're going to get to those as well. Um, so I am really, really excited um, about the fact that we're launching the career level up program today. Um, this is the only time that we're running the program this year. We have some exciting things, some things that are under embargo that I can't tell you about just yet, but keep an eye out in the emails to come. Um, but yeah, so I'm, we're launching this program on International Women's Day, which is quite fitting. Um, so we kick off in, I'm just taking a look at my calendar. That's like a week. Yeah. In like eight days, the whole program kicks off, kicks off. So let me pop the link. If you want to join, I'll pop the link in the chat for y'all. Um, you are the only ones that get access to the early bird pricing if you're watching this webinar. So we're going to chuck the link to join the Career Level Up program into the chat for you now. And it really does extend on the Know Your Worth challenge to the point where we've started to kind of flex that muscle and we're going to get it extraordinarily strong over the course of the eight weeks together. And through the support and mentoring and co-mentoring that you'll get through the career cohort of the other dozens of women in the program as well. Um, So I'm going to get Rachel to pop the link to the program into the chat for you. Um, But let me talk you through specifically why it is so helpful. Um, And the other good news that I wanted to share with all of you, because you've joined, you know, I I wanted to let you know that there was um, a special opportunity for everyone who's joined the program, the Masterclass Live. So let me go ahead and share that with you too. Um, So because you're joining the masterclass today, the good news is when you join the Career Level Up program, you also get access to two other mini courses that we have, the LinkedIn Makeover and also the Job Interview Bootcamp. Um, Plus you'll get early access to the Slack channel, which has all of our alumni and our current students in it as well. So you can check it out. It's peptalkher.com forward slash level up. And it's an eight week live coaching program. So every week you get access to me Um, And we'll be doing live programming, talking through the eight different modules that we cover throughout the two month program. And you get to connect with the other people in the program as well. And we really do spend a lot of time running through practical exercises. So there's a heap of scripts that you get access to in the portal, um, you know, like videos and workbooks and all this kind of stuff. But it's not just like a PDF that you'll print and never kind of look at. You're actually going to put them into practice. And we're going to throw you in the deep end, right? Like you're going to actually have to have a mock negotiation. You're going to have to identify and and calculate what is the number that you should be getting, right? What does that number look like? What should it look like? Have you said it out loud? Can you ask for it without breaking out in a sweat or starting to laugh, right? Um, So that's, that's the other really different thing that I would say is unusual about our program is that it really does push you to practically engage in this sort of career conversations, right? Because a lot of us don't do any preparation ahead of time. We don't think strategically about office politics. We don't think about three to five years from now and what lily pad jumps we need to make to get there. Um, But I'll be talking to you through that in the program and that's pretty transformational as well. Um, And I just want to say one thing, like for people, and I know that, as I said, we've talked a little bit about how you can Google a lot of things and you can jump on YouTube and learn a heap. And so if you are thinking, I've got this, I'm going to use the Know Your Worth Challenge and I'm going to negotiate, I I, like all the best and I, I really trust that it will go well. But I do just want to caution you to say, if you make the wrong remove, it can be quite catastrophic. So I just don't want you to do that. So let's just talk through that quickly because I don't want it to impact you in a negative way. I've actually seen people lose six figure job offers because they didn't know how to apply the framework specifically to their organization or to their specific industry. Right. So it's not enough to just take a script or a framework and ask the question. There's a lot of context and we talk about it in the sense in the program, we talk about it in the sense of like an iceberg. You got to think a lot about like what's going on beneath the surface of the iceberg as well. Right. So I do really want you to make sure that you take all of the context into consideration as well, because that is crucial. 
because I don't want you to get into a situation where it actually does more harm than, than good, right? When we think about context, that's your individual boss. It's your industry and the economic situation that your industry is in right now. Um, and just making sure that your details, that the, you've like dotted your I's and crossed your T's in a big way, right? So that you can kind of pivot that conversation no matter what else might come up in the course of the negotiation, right? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, you can do nothing and you can kind of take this and just ruminate with it for a couple more months and sort of see how you go, or you can take action, right? And it really is like that kind of fork in the road crossroads moment for you. Um, the fear is costing you money, at least, you know, multiple six figures, if not seven figures in the long run, right? When we think, when we think back to that graph we looked at earlier that shows the compounding effect of even a really small raise of that $5,000. So inaction, make no mistake, is gonna cost you money, right? It's gonna cost you, your family, your legacy, it's gonna cost you money, right? Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like that, right? And I would be so excited because I just love seeing everyone's names popping up in the chat and in the, in the Zoom room throughout the program. I'll be so excited to have you join the Level Up program. As I said, we're kicking off on International Women's Day, which is quite special. So this is the only cohort we're running for 2022. I'll explain to you more in a couple of weeks why that is. We've got some exciting things happening. Um, but yeah, so this is the one and only program that I'm running live this year. Uh, and I hope that you will find, I know that you will find the live coaching helpful. But more than that, I'm really excited for you to get to know and build further community with the other women in the cohort too. Um, because that has been pretty transformational for the prior cohorts. This is cohort number five, I think, five or six. I think this is cohort number five. So we've run this program for about 18 months. Um, we run it in-house as well for large Fortune 500 companies and their executives. And so this is like our open program where individuals can come and join to get access to that kind of high level executive coaching as well. Um, so some of the results are pretty wild. So this was a $65,000 pay raise. Um, this is one of the students who went through the program about late last year, I think it was in October. Um, a, a massive, massive media company that you would all definitely know the name of. Um, so you can see there that like, like that's, that's wild. Like that is just like an extra $65,000. And she was not on six figures to start with. I can tell you that much. I think she was on maybe 70 or 80 grand. So it bumped her up to, I guess it was like 145. So that's that's kind of a, a, an example of, I suppose, the transformation. And I will say this particular student who I am very fond of was in a very negative mindset and was very stuck and was very spiraling of like, it's not possible in my industry, no one gets paid. Well, that was where she was at, right? So I was so chuffed to see this, especially from her, because there was so much work that had to be done to get her to basically do a 180 from a mindset perspective, truly. So I'm always excited by any results, obviously, but like this one meant a lot to me because she was not in a great place, I wouldn't say, from a growth mindset perspective, um, but she got there and she got the results, right, to prove it, which is really, really cool. So how it works is there's like a portal that you get access to. So you can see there's like lots of different videos and PDFs and downloadable things and calculators and um, we give you like access to some secret websites that have up-to-date um, salary data and all that sort of stuff. We have a private Slack channel just for your cohort, the 2022 cohort. Plus then there's also access to all the alumni who've graduated before, who work at companies like, you know, um, Zendesk, DocuSign, there's lawyers, there's marketers, people at Canva, um, all sorts of different places. Um, so yeah, ch check out peptalko.com forward slash level up. That pricing is available for y'all for the next four hours. So it's actually on sale right now. Um, so it's $297 a month. Um, and so that's the initial investment. And then that's for five months. Or you can pay in full and it's like a 20% discount, which I think comes down to about $1,597, $1, something like that. Um, so we try to make it as affordable as possible. And if we think about the ROI on the investment, um, the smallest ROI that I would expect anyone to get from the program is at least one and a half. That's assuming, you know, that smaller four to $5,000 raise. We do have people that get, you know, 50, 60 X ROI in terms of their investment. 
Um, so it kind of depends, but I would be very surprised if you wouldn't at least get one, one and a half to two X ROI. And the good news is with the program that we do a seven day, you know, risk-free trial as well. So you can just kind of join up and see if it's a fit for you. And if you hate it, that's fine. No hard feelings. Just let us know. And the team will process a refund for you too. Um, so yeah, so that's what we're excited to launch. It starts on International Women's Day. So we kick off in seven days from now. If you've got questions, let me know in the chat. I'm excited to hear from you. Um, I can share with you as well this. Um, let me let me bring this up. Excuse me one sec. Okay, cool. So yeah, so the other thing that I would say that people tell me is quite different about this program to others is the office politics module that we spend a lot of time on because as you get more senior in your career, the office politics part of your role becomes more significant. In fact, they reckon that executives spend 60% of their time on office politics. Um, so it becomes less about the doing and the executing and more about kind of the strategy and the relationships. So we talk you through how to deal with that in a way that feels good and not kind of icky to you as well, because you want to be authentic, of course, in the workplace. Um, so that's a big part of what we talk through, which really makes a difference for people as well, right? In terms of just identifying what some of their fears are in terms of that are holding them back from engaging in office politics and whether that's actually been sort of detrimental to their career and how they can, how they can shift that. Um, so expect a heap of live coaching, a lot of mock conversations, mock negotiations, really personalized feedback, and I'm going to hold you accountable too. So I'll be following up with you. We've got the office hours. Um, and so if you're someone who likes to have structure to make sure that you keep that momentum going, then I would say this program is great because it's really only, you know, 60 to 90 minutes a week that you need to invest and you will get that forward momentum trajectory throughout the course of the program too with me kind of coaching you cheerleading you along the way and occasionally giving you some tough love if i think that that's what you need um depending on your style and all that kind of stuff so in terms of the modules themselves i'll go through the specifics for you so we spend the first module which sometimes i guess is maybe one of my favorites it's about like finding your zone of genius and your true north so we go through gallup strength finders and really go deeper into you and your strengths so that we can then help push you in the right direction from there and you can identify where you want your career to go next. Then we focus on pay and numbers, which is always really fun. Um, so we're going to spend two entire weeks on negotiating and getting really specifics, specific on what that dollar figure should look like for you. We spend a lot of time as well on your strategic network matrix, because as you go up in your career, like more than half of the job opportunities are never actually even advertised. So I want you to get access to that other half, right? I want you to be the one who gets access to the opportunities that are never on LinkedIn or on any of your job sites. And that comes down to your network. So we're really gonna flex that and strengthen that throughout the course of the program. You're gonna be adding new people to your network. Um, so that's really impactful as well. Um, we're gonna focus on executive presence. What does that mean? What does that look like? How can you engage in that in a way that feels good for you? Um, and why is that important? And then, as I mentioned, again, the office politics and navigating that strategically is really important as part of the program too. Um, so here, oh yeah, this is the, um, this is someone who, oh yeah, this one was cool. This is a, one of our graduates. She was working in a totally unrelated industry and wanted to pivot into tech. And she actually ended up getting two offers, one with Zendesk and one with CultureAmp. Um, really interesting career trajectory, quite a shift. So for her, it was a lot about transferable skills. So if you're in one industry now and looking to make quite a pivot, um, this will be uh, relevant for you, I would say, right? To really understand that you don't always have to go back and do an MBA, right? You don't always have to go back to college necessarily to transition. If you wanna become a surgeon or a doctor, then you need to go back to college. But depending on your industry, there's often ways that you can actually make a jump. You don't have to go back to a super junior role necessarily. Um, and that's quite sort of an aha moment for a lot of people as well. Um, can we not get involved in the office politics at all? Kind of, sort of, it depends is what I would say to that, Siska. Um, so we spend a lot of time kind of talking about this. You can, but it's a lot harder and it depends on your industry. It depends on the size of your company. So we talk about that in more detail, but it's possible. Um, 
it just depends. It really does. It really does depend. Um, <clears throat> oh, this is cool. So Laura is already preparing for raises. That is awesome. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So let me talk you through a little bit more specifically as well of like, if you join the program, when you join the program, like what exactly, you know, are you going to get out of it? I'll, I'll share this with you. Give me one sec. Um, so obviously you get the live coaching calls with me every single week. There's a bonus networking session that you get access to as well. There's curriculum videos and resources and you get access to this stuff for life. So it's not just the eight weeks. Um, a lot of students, and I think Megan's on the call today, I know that you've been back to the negotiation modules in the past. So a lot of students will join, do the course, implement some of the tactics. And then in six months, maybe they're applying for a new job. So they'll come back to the portal and take a look at the scripts again, or maybe rewatch one of the sessions just to kind of refresh their memory. So you get access to all of that curriculum forever. That doesn't expire. So that's the good news there. Um, you also get recordings of all of the live sessions as well, in case you miss it, because like life happens. Um, so you'll get access to that. You can catch up down the track if you need to. Um, you get a bonus. What if they say no script as well? If you join in the next four hours, um, we have the Slack channel, which is just for your cohort that you would get access to. Um, and of course, you know, the community of, of other professional women um, that you'll be you'll be going through the program with, which is really cool. Um, Again, I'm not supposed to have favorite parts of the course, but that is one of my favorite parts. Um, the people who are on the call today, as I said, there is that sale pricing for you all um, that is available for the next 48 hours. If you join in the next four hours, though, you do also get access to the fast action bonus of the what if they say no script, as well as the mini courses. So the LinkedIn makeover mini course and also the job interview techniques mini course, too. So you'll get access to those straight away. Um, if you join in the next four hours with the program too, which as I said, um, is $297 um, and then the same monthly payment for five months if you join straight away. Um, and then, as I said, if it's not for you, you can check it out if you're like, mm, I don't really think this is your vibe, your, my vibe. Um, there's no hard feelings. You can just let Kim on my team know and they will process a refund for you if you decide it's not what you need right now. But let me know in the chat if you've got questions, because I want to make sure that we can get to as many of these as possible. Um, so let me know. Let me jump in here and just take a quick little look. Um, OK, so someone's going through a restructure. Yes. So, Ingrid, it depends. And this is annoying, probably. Um, I, I would love to go into this in more detail, but basically it depends how long you've been at the company. Um, and some of that you should be able to access on the intranet. So you shouldn't necessarily need to ask for the transparency on those pay brackets. There's probably ways you can find that out without even having to ask. Um, typically the intranet will, will sort that out. If there's an enterprise bargaining agreement, it'll be written. The, the pay bans will be written into that agreement. Um, so you would be able to kind of identify that, um, ahead of time, but yes, um, if your company has laid off a bunch of staff, which I've actually had some messages today through from students who are going through that, it's a good and a bad time to ask for a raise. It's good because it's possible that you'll be taking on a few people's job now. Um, it's bad because the company can use the excuse, oh, we've just laid people off. There's no more budget. So the um, salary module where we talk through the wage to kind of step your way through that delicately, you don't want to be disrespectful. Um, and you want to kind of walk that line, but, but it is in some ways actually a great opportunity to leverage for a, a promotion or a raise or both for sure. Yeah, this is a really great question too. How can you not be tagged as like a money chaser or like ungrateful and just kind of like greedy? Um, that is all down to framing and the language that you use and, um, all of the video content that's in the portal is obviously filmed because it's video. We've actually just refilmed that with a new film crew recently. And so um, we were talking about that as a team this week. Um, it's all in the language. So the words that you use are very important because we know that when you're negotiating, the words that you say are important, but they're actually only 7% of the equation. So like 7%, so less than 10% of the words that of like in terms of if we look at the way that you communicate less than seven percent is the words so the non-verbal cues the body language that you use in person or on a virtual zoom call all of those factors actually cumulatively 
add up to be super impactful to how successful that negotiation is going to be and how successful you are at making sure that you control how the other person perceives you at the end of it, right? So we don't want you to be perceived as someone who's greedy at the end of it. Um, so we unpack that in a lot more detail. And again, unfortunately, gender plays a role in this. And we talk more about the research and, and why that is and how you can kind of um, pivot that. Yes, so I would say most of the people, maybe it's 50-50, a, a lot of graduates in the program are negotiating at an existing job. So they're actually quite happy. They like the company, but they kind of feel a little bit screwed over on pay, if they're honest. Um, so that person who got the $103,000 pay raise, which I told you about, she stayed at the same company. Would you believe it? I will say she did have another offer. So she had a little bit of leverage. Um, she didn't really leverage it to a huge extent, though, actually. I think she did tell them, but it wasn't like an ultimatum or anything. But some people go through the program and then actually realize during the course of the of the, the coursework, oh, maybe I may need to leave if I don't get the outcome that I want. So some people come to that realization that they might want to change like after a couple of months of implementing some of the tactics. So it depends. Um, and then, you know, to your point about work life balance. Yes. And yeah, I mean, for sure, like, you know, obviously um, having flexible work arrangements um, is important to everyone for different reasons. And especially if you're in the situation where you're a single parent, for sure. So you're looking to stay at a company with a team that you know already and that you already can kind of trust. Um, I completely understand that. So, yeah, I would say, Ty, like for you, um, again, walking that tightrope of sort of making sure that your needs are very clear and that they're backed up with data as to the value that you're adding to the business um, and also um, not damaging that relationship, right? Because that's what we, that's, that's, that's the risk. I don't ever want you to damage things so that actually in asking it makes things worse. That's what we're here to avoid, right? And that's what the career level up will help you avoid to do. Um, so it is that fine line of kind of, of walking that balance. Oh, this happens all the time, Marie. How do you handle a boss who's great and super smart, but a terrible manager? Yeah, and we talk about this and this is um, this is where it comes down to just, we, you know, we spend a whole module on understanding your own zone of genius. And then a part of that is also appreciating and being able to understand and better analyze your boss, right? And their strengths and weaknesses and how best you can tackle that, right? So a big part of it is putting ourselves into their boss's shoes. Um, if your boss is going through a divorce right now, is it the best time to ask for a raise if you know that they're settling in court that day? You know, like if they've just been promoted and they're super inexperienced and they've come from another department, just, just sort of navigating that and making sure that you can put your best foot forward. It's a challenge and sometimes that involves managing sideways up and down as well. Um, so there are ways to do that. I would say, Marie, um, it's just a little bit more of a dance, like a chessboard kind of thing is how is the example that I often give. Um, uh, uncertainties. Yes. So one of the things that you can do when you're negotiating, obviously we want to maximize for salary and for cash, but one of the modules in the career level up, we talk specifically also about non-monetary benefits. So one of those things to your point, um, Ingrid is title right? And being able to negotiate for your dream title, or if there is no money using that as leverage to kind of get a bump in title so that it benefits you down the line when recruit recruiters are finding you on LinkedIn and all of that kind of stuff, right? Um, so yeah, I would say title is, is a super important part of it as well. Uh, that's great. Uh, interesting. Yeah. I'm appreciating that your boss has had a long week. Um, awesome. Awesome. If you've got questions, send them through, but let me just pop the link to the chat because I will say, so the early bird pricing, um, is available for the next 48 hours. Um, and the bonuses, the, what if they say no cheat sheet, the LinkedIn makeover and the job interview bootcamp, the fast action bonuses, those are available for the next four hours. So until 10 PM Eastern time, which I guess is like 1 PM in Sydney which I suppose is like 2 a.m. for London, if my maths is correct. Um, so yeah, make sure that you check that out. If you're on the fence, I would say jump on in because there is that seven day money back guarantee that you get. So if come International Women's Day, after a week of the content, you're like, mm, it's not really my thing. You just let us know and we'll refund you. That's fine. No hard feelings. 
Um, we're confident that we'll that you'll love it. Uh, but of course, it's got to be the right fit for you. You know, you've got to feel like it's the right time for you. Um, time commitment wise, it, an hour for the live calls is kind of what I would suggest is the minimum. Even if you can't make the live call itself, at least to be able to commit to yourself to watch that back. Right. Ideally, if you had an extra 20 to 30 minutes a week, I would think that is glorious because then you'll be able to sort of action some of the next steps that you have. But so I would say like one to two hours a week, plenty um, to be able to work through the content. You can spend a lot more on it, a lot more time on it if you want. But at a minimum, one to two hours is a great amount of time. Yeah, you are so welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. No problem. We've got people still joining. Hello. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Um, so I'm going to pop, let me pop this link. Um, let me pop this up for you all so you can see it um why weren't that oh yeah there we go okay so i'll pop that on the screen for you now too so you can see that uh let me let me go ahead and do that but if you've got questions keep on sending them through i'm happy to take as many questions as we can get to so peptalkho.com forward slash level up all in lowercase so excuse that slide that's going weird um um, 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 um. Okay, so who is this for in terms of level in their career? So typically, I would say you want to have had sort of five or six years experience, at least in the workplace. Um, I would say like two years experience is probably not enough. So if you're like a new graduate with one year, two years out of college, it's probably not the best fit for you. But five to six years experience plus is kind of the sweet spot. We've had people do the course who are in their late 50s. And we've had people do the course who are in their early 20s. Um, So people who've had anywhere from sort of five to 25 years of of work experience. That's that's kind of who it's really a great fit for. Um, So so that's that's typically who who the program is great for. Someone sent me a question and said, who is it for from an industry perspective? So industry wise, um, it's fairly agnostic. We've had people in marketing, finance, law, tech, engineers we actually have quite a few people in the mining industry would you believe uh come through the program we've had teachers come through the program so it's kind of agnostic as to the industry i would say it's more about i would say where you are in terms of what do you want for your next steps so if you're looking to make a change if you're looking to make a step up if you're looking to get paid more that is when it's a really great fit for you if you're in a situation where you're still spiraling and in a very negative headspace and just like not believing that any change is possible, then it's not a good fit for you. I'm confident if you feel like that, I'll be able to change that. As we saw with one of our students, the, the woman that I mentioned earlier, who got a $65,000 raise, she was in a really bad way. Um, she still joined and, and so she got a huge amount of impact out of it. I saw her, it was like day and night from when she started. Um, but if you're if you're willing to kind of invest in yourself and unpack some of the layers of what's going on for you as well, um, then it's a great fit. But industry rise, it's really, it's quite broad. And what's interesting is actually one of our students said to me, she said like, she loved the curriculum and she got a promotion, which was kind of cool. So that's great. But she said she actually, her favorite part was getting to meet professional women from all around the world, from super different industries who she would never otherwise meet. And she has loved that from a from a network perspective and that kind of community point of view. So that was one of the most important things for her um, was that side of the program that she loved. Um, okay, so yes, so good. This is a good question from Amanda. So Amanda's just switched industries. Um, yeah, so you don't have to have had you know five years experience just in financial services or five years experience as an engineer. No, I just mean you've been in the workplace to some extent for preferably five plus years. Um, if, if, if you're unsure about whether it's a fit for you, just send me an email and I'll, I'll be pretty honest with you. Um, the reason I say like, if you're a graduate and you're one or two years out of college, you would get something out of the course. It's just that when, when it comes to strategy, office politics, challenges with managers, I feel like it's a little harder to have had as much experience, you know, in that kind of space. And we wanna make sure that also everyone can kind of share their experiences to kind of other people in the group too because that's where some of like the cohort learning happens so um so that's the that's the that's why we kind of say like five-ish years of experience but it doesn't have to be the one company or the one industry transferable is totally fine um yeah great question though amanda and i love that you're in biotech very cool 
very very cool um okay so ingrid's asking should you give your wish figure so wish want walk is a framework that we talk about in terms of being clear on what your three numbers are that you're looking for um it depends um and we go through this in a little bit more detail it depends on your plan b and it depends on what your alternative is so if you've been unemployed for a while and you really really need this job and you're worried that if you give your wish figure it's going to rule you out then we may counsel that you want to kind of give a range so that you can kind of pivot up and down depending. Um, so it, it, I would need a little bit more con context for that one, Ingrid, I would say, which is probably um, not the answer that you want to hear, but I would say that it depends. You can give a range as well, but it always comes back to like, what are your alternatives? How much leverage do you have? And are you willing to walk away? Because if you're willing to walk away, then there's more capacity to kind of get the range to the, to the higher level. Um, so we've got a great question here about accessibility. So we have a scholarship that we are giving away today. Um, what we've done from an accessibility perspective is um, the payment program, the payment plan is broken out over six months to make it more affordable. Um, so it's $297 a month. Um, and then that same payment for the five months, right? Or if you wanna pay in full, that's totally fine. And you can get a discount as well. There's a VIP option. If you're wanting to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me as well, you can certainly do that. And that's all listed on the pay on the, um, the, the page as well. You can take a look at that. Um, so if you have other questions about that, you can always send us an email. I'm gonna just pop the email into the chat for you. If you've got specific questions about your scenario, send through an email so that we can get to all of those questions for you too. Great question. What time are the calls? So the calls are, let me just, I want to make sure that I get this right for you all. They are, I believe they're 6 PM Eastern. I just want to triple check because the time zone kind of goes a bit funny at one point with daylight savings. So I just want to triple, triple check this for you. Give me one second. Oh, uh, here we go. Yes, 6 p.m. Eastern. So the calls are at 6 p.m. Eastern for the eight weeks. Um, so that is in the morning for those of you in the Asia Pacific region. Um, and that's in the evening for those of us on the East Coast, which is like 3 p.m. for those of you on Pacific time. Um, and people in Europe, it's quite late. It's 10 p.m. in London. Um, so those are the times for the calls. They are recorded. So if you can't make them, that's OK. You can catch up. And then we have office hours as well, and they are once a week on the Slack channel too. So yeah, make sure, so, so we try and make it as accessible as possible for everyone. And as I said, this is the only program that we're running this year because TBD, I'll tell you all those other fun things in a couple of weeks time. So keep an eye on the inbox for that. Um, I'm excited to have you. This is going to be great. Okay. Let me just take a look at the questions that are coming through. If you've got any other questions, just send them over to me. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the cool thing about the program is that you, is that you get that, that personalized access. So you feel like it's going to be really tailored to what's, you know, important to you in that moment, because I know I keep saying it depends for some people, but I just, again, I don't want to give you bad advice. That's going to make you do something that's actually going to damage your situation. That's the last thing that I want to do. So I want to make sure that any of the advice that I give you is really bespoke to the details and the specifics um, of your situation as well. Okay, so we have some exciting announcements to make as well um, about some really cool prizes that we are announcing. So we are giving away a scholarship to the Career Level Up program, which I'm super excited about. Um, and so this is based on the number of points that people have got from the challenge. So the people that were posting in the Facebook group, sending through emails, posting on social media. Um, so congratulations to Fanula, who is getting the scholarship for that program. Massive congrats to you, Fanula. So excited to have you in the program. Um, so make sure you send us a DM and we will sort you out. And Kim um, is receiving a scholarship to the Salary SOS program as well, which is our mini course. If you need like a bite-sized night before emergency um, uh, pep talk to do that pay raise conversation, Kim Huapaya, um, I hope I've pronounced that properly. Kim, we will be sending you that scholarship code for you as well. So congratulations. Um, a great question here from Wing about seven years into your career with three different companies. Is it too early to job hops? No, it is not. 
Job hopping is super interesting. So this is actually one of the most effective ways often to get more money. You don't have to, but it can be very, very effective. And when I was a journalist, and I know we've got a few journalists on the call, um, that was one of the ways that I was able to get my salary tripled in just a couple of years was through other job offers. Um, so we can talk about how you do that. And one of the things that I would say to you, Wing, is that like strategically having those conversations is important because we don't want to damage your reputation along the way, right? So um, it's tempting to burn bridges uh, when you're leaving a toxic workplace. I've been there. Uh, we can talk about that another day. Um, but, you know, again, playing a long game with a long game career, 30, 40, 50 year career, we really don't want to burn bridges. So we'll talk to you about some strategies that you can do that, but still leave the door open um, because there's this concept of boomerang employees. They sort of use that term these days for people who leave a company and come back, leave a company, and maybe they come back one day, right? So it's always nice to have that option because you may leave and kind of hate it. So it's nice to have the opportunity if you ever want to down the track to be able to come back as well. Yes, huge congratulations to Fanula and Kim. We are so excited to have you. Um, if you've got questions specifically about the payment plan, send me an email, hello at peptalkher.com. Um, and to join the program and get that um, early bird pricing, it's peptalkher.com forward slash level up. Um, and if you join in the next four hours, you're going to get access to the mini courses of the LinkedIn makeover and also the job interview prep framework, which is amazing. Um, and I appreciate all of those DMs coming through. I'm going to get back to as many of you as I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sending those through. So I'm so excited. It feels quite fortuitous that the 2022 cohort is starting on International Women's Day. Um, I'm really looking forward to it and I'm excited to see a heap of you in there. Um, but I hope regardless that you've walked away from the Know Your Worth Challenge and the Clear Compton Confident with an understanding of some of the secrets um, as to what it takes to really get the success that you're looking for. Um, make sure that you shout out at Pep Talk Her on Instagram. Let us know what you've learned throughout the program. And I cannot wait to see you all in the Level Up program when we kick off in less than a week. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Bye.